Hey everyone. So in a previous video, I showed how you can make a deep neural network in ML.NET. And in this video, I'm going to show how you can use that model that we built, save it, and then load it back in another project to continue making predictions. So I'm in Visual Studio, and this is the project that we created in the previous video that creates the deep neural network, does the training, and creates the model. So all I'm going to do here is at the bottom is I want to save this model. To do that, I'll just do context that model that save and just pass in a couple of things here, pass in the model that we created from the pipeline. And here it asked for an input schema. And what it, what that is, is that we need to give it the schema of the data that we trained it on. So image data, and then we can do dot schema. And then the next thing is you can either give it a stream or a string for the file path. So I'll just do that and I'll just save it directly here. I call it DNN model that zip. And I'm going to do, I'm just going to run this again real quick. All right. So that's finished. What I can do is go into this project into the bin and debug and you see the model saved right there. So I'm going to go in another project here. I already have some new good projects already loaded. ML.net and then the deep neural network packages. And also have Azure storage package. So we can use that later on. And in this solution, I have a couple of images that we can use to predict on after we load our model. And speaking of loading our model, I'm going to I'm going to take it and just drag it over into the solution here. Then I'll mark it to copy. All right, so the first thing I want to do, create my context. Next, I want to do kind of the same thing that we did in the previous video. So I'll just copy these things over. We're going to get a reference to the images that I have over here. And then we'll create that new image data, which we actually need to create as well. Then we'll go ahead and create that image prediction class. All right, so we got that done. Next, I'm going to actually load in the model here. So I'll do context that model that load. And I'll just use the name of it there. And then it needs that input schema. And I can use some C sharp magic here by doing this inline since it's an out variable. I can create it in here and call it input schema. We actually won't be using that. So, and since I have my model, I can go ahead and create a prediction engine. Using the image data and image prediction. And just give it in the model. Now, similar to before, I want to actually get my original labels that I use to train on. So I'll do that same thing that I did previously by getting the V buffer of the keys and then using the prediction engine that output schema, get that label key that was used to train that image, train the model and then get key values. And then from those keys, I can call dense values and get it an array from it. So the first thing to use this model for predictions is I'm going to print it on these images I already have here. And since I already have a reference to those up here, I can just do for each. On those images, because they're already in that image data type that we need to pass it into our model. So I can just do prediction engine to predict on that image. 
then I can write out what each of these are. I can get the name of the image file, get the score, and then the predicted label. So let's run this and see what it looks like. There we go, we predicted on our images. Uh, pretty good predictions actually. These top three are 99% and the last one's uh, 85% and they predicted correctly. But that's only if we have our images on our file system here. What if we want to read from blob storage? Luckily, I already have some images in Blob Storage that we can use. So I have a couple sandwich and sushi images here. And since we already have that NuGet package already done, I can connect to my storage account and get references to them, those, those images. I can parse the connection string, which I already have defined up above. create a client for the blob account, get access to the container, which is images. And I'm gonna get all the images here. And this is gonna be a an async method. So I do container that list blob submit segmented async. And it wants in a continuation token, I can just pass in null for this. And we don't have this set up to do async, so we can change that. And we already set this project to be C sharp 7.1, so it allows us to use async in our main method. So now that we have a list of our images pretty much, we can read through each of those images. And instead of var and r for each, like I usually do, I'm gonna specify this as cloud block blob. Because if I just do, first we'll do images.results, which is what we get back. But if I do var here, it's going to do the type as i blob, as i list blob item. But unfortunately, that doesn't give us the information that we need on the item to read from it. So we do cloud block blob so we can get the name of the image. And for each item, we can get a reference to it. Item that name. And since we have a reference to it, we can download it to the file. I just download it with the same name. And we need to create that image data type for each of these items. And we just give it the image path, which is going to be where the same place we downloaded it to. Now we can get a prediction from it. Then I'll write these out. Kind of the same way that we did before. And um, I'll do a new line here just so we can differentiate between the previous output and this output. So let's see how that goes. There's our original files that we had on our system here. And here's the images I had on blob storage. And we see we do 99% again on the first three. But if you look in this last one, 74% on the sushi, it predicted a sandwich. Let's take a look at what this is. I'm curious to see why it predicted a sandwich instead of sushi on this one. So <laughs> it's like sushi made it look like 
teddy bears or cats. So I can kind of see a little bit why it would think it was a sandwich because it doesn't look like regular sushi there. So that just kind of tells us that we need to retrain this model on some more data. So that, that'll help with this prediction. But I'll end it there for now. I hope you enjoyed the, the video and thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.